There's lots of plays I really, really love. I love Richard II. I think that's an extraordinary play, but it doesn't have very many particularly likable characters in. Um, I love uh, Twelfth Night, and as you like it, uh, my favourite, I think, is Much Ado About Nothing. The character of Beatrice in Much Ado About Nothing, who I think for me is the, is the archetypal romantic comedy heroine. She's, she's the archetype for those Catherine Hepburn characters and for Elizabeth Bennet and for a lot of, a lot of characters that I've, I've tried to write in my books. The, the, the main character in my last book was very much inspired by Beatrice and Much Ado About Nothing. Uh, she's so smart and admirable and vulnerable but intelligent and a terrific character, I think. Uh, for me, mainly cinema. Uh, I, I, for me, reading and watching movies has always gone hand in hand. Uh, and Billy Wilder, Woody Allen, Ernst Lubitsch, Preston Sturges, they're as big an influence on me as a, as a writer of prose as, as, as other novelists. So I love cinema. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I, I read with the TV on and I, I watched a lot of television drama. So also writers like Jack Rosenthal, uh, playwrights Harold Pinter and and Tom Stoppard, um, a lot of the playwrights I studied when I was sort of seventeen, eighteen. Um, Chekhov. Um, I, I mean, I couldn't point to a passage in anything I've written that's inspired, that's that's Shakespeare-like. But Shakespeare's been a a big influence for me, particularly in the writing of romantic comedy. So um, yes, it's it. I I, I try not to compartmentalise them too much. Uh, even songs, odd songs, have inspired passages in my book. So it's 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 all part of the same group of influences and inspirations. A lot of American novelists. Uh, I, I've I've just read the new Anne Tyler. I think she's a terrific social comedian, a great writer of funny, touching stories. Um, I, I I really admire the ambition of. Of Jonathan Franzen. Uh, amongst British writers, I'm just reading a lot of Jeff Dyer. I think he's the funniest writer in, 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 in this country now. I think he's a brilliantly witty, funny, dry writer. Uh, um, who else? I think Zadie Smith writes terrific novels that are both accessible and playful and formally experimental. Um, I think she has that gift that a lot of American writers have of, of being accessible, like Jeffrey Eugenides, Jonathan Franzen, being accessible but but also playful with the form and innovative. Well, the book I read from this evening, I think, Great Expectations, I think that's the book that has the biggest influence on me. Uh, I've stolen from it frequently and it, I, I've read it 20, 30 times now. Um, another book which I keep going back to, which I read every year or so, and which is not a particularly well-known or well-regarded book, is uh, Tender as the Night by Scott Fitzgerald, which has a, a terrific atmosphere of melancholy and sadness. And it's, it's both a very romantic book and a very cynical book. And that's a book I really, really revere and love, and uh, which I try to read every year. And um, as most... Tangibly, I suppose, uh, 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 there was a short passage in Tess of the D'Urbervilles which gave me the idea for my last book, One Day, um, specifically gave me the, the form of the book, the idea for the form of the book. So, so I stole a lot from, from that small passage of six or seven sentences. Um, I pretty much got a whole book out of that. So that book has been a big influence on me. Well, I've just come out of three years where I've had no discipline and no routine at all. And it was fun for a while, and now it just makes me miserable. So I, it's a very good question because it's something that I think about a lot. And I'm just uh, trying to find the answer to that, trying to rediscover routine and discipline and a working day that starts at nine and involves reading as well as writing. So I, I, I'm... I'm trying to get back into that I found it harder and harder to concentrate I don't know whether it's me getting older or the internet or uh, something's happening but I, I can't sit down can't seem to sit down and work in quite the way I used to so I think discipline and routine are, are hugely important and I I wish I had more of them it's a big worry <laughs> I 
I think so. I try not to be too too Luddite about it. I have no problem at all with e-books. They're not. I don't particularly enjoy reading on a screen. I I don't think it's something that I I I'll pursue. But I'm really happy for my books to be read in in, in whatever form. Obviously, I'm delighted. Um, I, I wonder if it will actually affect the form. Whether people will be drawn to shorter books or more generic books or books that are that are maybe more eventful more story based or uh books that incorporate music and maps and diagrams and animation all of those things i th- i think uh, i think the form will inevitably change quite a bit i don't really feel as if i'm at the vanguard of that i i am quite luddite i think in terms of um twitter and facebook and social media entirely personally i have nothing against them uh, in general, but for me personally, they're a massive distraction, and they make they send me crazy. They make me neurotic and paranoid. And I, I have, I'm not one of those authors who's embraced that technology. I know a lot of authors have and have got a lot from it, but for me, it's uh, it's a disaster. <laughs> no, I no, I, I don't. I always it always gives me a, a, a th- thrill. I'm really excited by it. I've I, I've only once or twice had the nerve to say that's uh, that's my book and thank you for for reading it. Um, and the last time I did it, I got a very good response. But the time before, I I don't think they believed me. I think they thought I was some kind of freak. It was in a park. It was in Central Park in New York, and I was so excited to see someone reading it in New York that I that I went up and uh, and said I'm sorry to interrupt, but I I wrote that book and I want to say thank you for for reading it and I hope you enjoy it and she was very nice but the guy next to her just kind of went oh. <laughs> I think he thought it was a a chat up line or something anyway uh, no it's it's always exciting I still get excited seeing it in the bookshop you know I find it very weird I think it must be another David Nichols